Hello FPR managers and welcome back for another video. My name's Jack and today we're discussing the buy hold self with Double Game Week 20. If you guys are enjoying the FPR videos, drop a like and subscribe to show your support for the channel. And there is going to be lots more FPR content coming your guys way shortly. So that I mean you'll have to click that notification bell to know when we post next. So with that being said, let's jump into the video. So in today's video, I'm going to look over three buy, three hold, and three sell options to assist you guys with your transfer planning for the upcoming double game week. Starting off with the buy players, the first one here is Harry Kane, a fairly obvious pick, especially since Tottenham did win their game in the FA Cup this morning. I'm really hoping that Man City don't draw their game and they're not going to get a replay in their fixture, which will mean this uh, Tottenham and Manchester City double game week will be going ahead for game week 20 as there could be some complications with the uh, double game weeks if the FA Cup matches do have to be replayed. So it will come down to this Man City FA Cup fixture. But good to see Tottenham got the win, which does increase the appeal of Harry Kane. He's been absolutely excellent for Tottenham recently. Picked himself up three attacking returns in his most recent match with a, uh, two goals and an assist in a mega hole in game week 19. And he looks to be carrying in some very strong form to double game week 20, where he has provided returns in two out of his last three starts for Tottenham since the return of the Premier League season and in my opinion he's my second favorite premium option in the whole of FPR right now better than Salah, better than KDB in my opinion. He's probably the next best option outside of Erling Haaland and I really recommend Harry Kane coming into your guys' sides, especially in place of Darwin Nunes, who's a player that's not been in great form for Liverpool recently and since Tottenham do have this double game week of Arsenal and Manchester City, I think now is the right time to jump on Harry Kane. Yes, Arsenal and Manchester City aren't the easiest fixtures respectively, but Kane does perform pretty well against these two opponents. We've seen Tottenham put up great performances against Manchester City, especially in recent history so hopefully Harry Kane can build on those 15 goals and four assists across the season also, his underlying stats are very, very strong as he has the third highest expected goals figure out of any player so far this season with 10.88 and actually has the top expected assist figure of 3.48 amongst forwards. So definitely a nice option to have, provides good bo uh, both goal and assist potential and is expected to score quite well in game week uh, 20 with nine predicted points by fix. Having a look at some other City assets, the first one here is Kevin De Bruyne. Yes, he's not been in the best form recently in terms of attacking returns for Manchester City. City, but with a couple of double game weeks coming up in game weeks 20 and 23, I think Manchester City assets are definitely worthwhile targeting, as whilst they haven't been in the best form, they have the fixtures to be able to improve this and have that increased chance of points potential with the two fixtures in game week 20 and 23. De Bruyne now probably becomes the best premium midfield option. Salah also hasn't been firing massively recently for Liverpool, so maybe De Bruyne with those extra fixtures could be an option worthwhile targeting. He's got Manchester United and Tottenham as his two double gaming fixtures, and of course has been impressive for City so far this year with three goals and ten assists. He does have one of the highest expected assists out of any player so far this season with 7.13, and he does have the second highest predicted points for double gaming 20 out of any player, only behind Erling Haaland with 10.6 so probably my favorite premium midfielder option right now so if you've got Salah in the teams I would recommend going Salah to De Bruyne mix it up with De Bruyne in the team he's got a couple of double game mix coming up and then if De Bruyne hasn't performed or you want to get back to Salah you can always just bring Salah back in and game mix 24 onwards and moving on to another city play here it's John Stones he's been excellent for them recently got the clean sheet and triple bonus against Chelsea in game mix 19 and he looks to be a very nailed starter for Man City and since the World Cup break, or uh, since the return of the Premier League from the World Cup break, he has started three consecutive games for City. And at 5.4, he's a great way to get into their defense for very, very cheap. A very good, consistent starter with just a 2% ownership. And if you're looking to get rid of Jao Cancelo, I think Stones could be the next best Man City defensive asset to target, as he's probably one of the more nailed-on defenders they have at the back. He frees up a lot of money as well, and he actually has a higher expected assist stat than Jao Cancelo so far this season. He's in fact nearly doubled at Jao Cancelo's expected assist with 1.22, plus he offers decent clean sheet potential when he's playing. So a nice option there with a good double game making game week 20 and 23 as well. A great way to get in on that Man City defense, capitalize on their clean sheets with the occasional chance of an attacking return. And he's expected to score pretty well in game week 20 with 5.2 predicted points. 
Let's have a look at the hold options now. These are three players that have been heavily transferred out by managers coming into game week 20, but I would recommend that you guys hold on to them as they still have good points potential over the coming game weeks. The first one here is Alexander Mitrovic. He is one of the more popular transfers out coming into double game week 20, but personally, I still like Mitrovic in the team. Obviously, he got that yellow card in double game week 19 for Fulham, which was very frustrating for people that did have him in the sides, especially after getting a goal in the first fixture of that double game week. But he's gonna he's just gonna get suspended for the second fixture of the double game at 19. He's good to go for double game at 20. He's got Newcastle away in game at 20, which is not the worst fixture, and he does have a couple of better fixtures down the track. Just considering how good a form he's in right now at 7.2, I don't see too many better forward options, maybe apart from Ivan Tony, but there is the uncertainty of whether he's gonna be allowed to play in the coming game. So for now, I'm still a fan of Mitrovic as I don't think there's any better forward options at his price, and I don't think it's worthwhile upgrading. Mitrovic to a premium forward, I would look to upgrade another forward in your side that's less valuable than Mitrovic as he's provided 11 goals and 2 assists across the season with a very high XG of 9.84 and he's improved his XA quite a bit in the recent game with 2.35 as well. He's been uh, performing very well since the return of the Premier League, got himself uh, 2 returns or two, yeah, 2 returns in his last 3 games for Fulham, so very impressive from that standpoint. Another Fulham asset that I would recommend you guys holding on to is Andreas Pereira. He's also been heavily transferred out. I don't really see why you'd look to get rid of Pereira as there aren't too many good upgrades you can get from his price. I've seen a couple of people go to Pascal Gross from Pereira. I don't think that's the best transfer as Gross doesn't have the best underlying numbers and Brighton do have some tricky fixtures coming up. So I'd still be keen to hold on to Andreas at 4.6. There's no reason to get rid of him. He's a great budget enabler and if you're looking for an upgrade in midfield, I look to upgrade a more expensive player to be out of for those better premium level assets in the middle of the park as there aren't too many big upgrades you can make from Andreas's price tag. And then the third hold option it would be Gabby Martinelli. He's been a great touch recently for Arsenal. Yes, he did blank in his most recent game and has Tottenham coming up next, but with a double game making game week 23 for Arsenal, I don't recommend you guys transferring him out as he is one of the more popular players to depart the squads coming into game week 20. He's been in very good format for and also for his price at 6.8. There aren't too many better options in terms of total points scored. Yes, you could go to Odegaard, but I don't know how much value you're going to get from that transfer since you're just getting in another Arsenal attacker for a hit or if you value a transfer at minus four points. I just don't think it's worth it. So Martinelli for me, a player that I'd be looking to hold on to if you do have him in the teams as he's probably the best option and one of the better options at around 6.8 in the middle of the park. He's got seven goals and five assists this season and some decent underlying numbers to show for it as well. So for now, right now, I'd be looking to hold on to Mitrovic, Andreas and Martinelli if you do have them in your teams. So with those buy and hold options discussed, let's have a look at some sell options ahead of Double Game Week 20. The first one here is Jao Cancelo, which may seem a bit surprising, but I do recommend going Cancelo down to either Stones or Akanji, as I think those two defenders from Manchester City are two players that are getting more consistent minutes than Cancelo, and are more obviously nailed on in that attack and uh, sorry in that defence, and allow for more money to be spent around the squad as they're nearly two million pounds cheaper than Jao Cancelo. And I just don't think 7.3 million is the right price for a player that's hardly got any minutes recently for Manchester City in the last three matches. So I do think spending a little bit less on that Manchester City defense could be worthwhile, especially since Stones and Akanji are at such good prices. Also, Cancelo doesn't have a very good attacking potential as his XA is just 0.71 across the whole season which is nearly half of what John Stones is with 1.22. So for that reason, I don't think it's worthwhile paying the extra 2 million for more attacking potential because he's not necessarily getting that attacking potential as, ja uh, as John Stones is offering more attacking threat from corners than Jacques Cancelo is doing all game. So for that reason, I think Cancelo is a good option to get rid of, free up a bit of money in that Man City defense and look to spend the money elsewhere right now. The other one here is Wolf Zaha. He is another fairly popular transfer out coming into Game Week 20. As Crystal Palace's fixtures do take a turn for the worst, I did see Zaha in a few teams uh, with the resumption of the Premier League as Crystal Palace did have a good short-term fixture schedule. But now those good fixtures are over, I think right now is the good time to get rid of those Crystal Palace assets, especially since there are lots of good midfield options at around £7 million, which Wilfred Zaha is priced at right now. 
so definitely a good player to get rid of with some bad fixtures coming up. And then Trossard in a similar boat to Wolf Sahar. He's got some tricky fixtures coming up as well with Liverpool at home in game week 20, plus a couple of more difficult ones after that. Personally, I've never been a massive fan of Trossard as his underlying numbers aren't insane, and he definitely has outperformed his XG and XA this season, and that is shown by his seven goals with just a five XG and three assists with just a 1.5 XA. So perhaps he's been uh, getting a little bit fortunate in front of goal and his chance creation as well and he isn't projected to score well at all across the next six weeks and for game week 20 he's only expected to score 2.8 points so fix are predicting him to blanking in double game week 20 so for that reason i do think trial is a good sell option as well and since he is coming in at around seven million pounds as we've discussed there are a couple of other good midfielder picks at that price right now which could be worthwhile targeting instead of especially zaha and trossard so for me cancelo zaha and trossard are three players that i'd be looking to get rid of from your sides Thanks for watching today's buy hold sell for Double Game Week 20. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, drop a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. As always, there's going to be lots of FPL videos coming your guys' way shortly, so make sure you've got that notification bell on to stay up to date with these videos. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.